Welcome once again to Grace Baptist Church and Sunday School. Again today we look forward to a Bible study, Sunday School. Today I want to talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Among the things that cause me significant sorrow is people, humanly speaking, who are nice people, having mellowed as they've grown older, but they don't give serious thought to being right with God. They do not see forgiveness from God for their behavior in life, as an all-important issue. They think they're going to be okay when they die. They don't really know if that's true. They're not really sure, but they're not concerned enough to let it bother them. A deceived heart has turned them aside. Isaiah 44, 20. Folks, the truth is there is nothing more important to every human being conceived and born of human beings than forgiveness. And that includes Adam and Eve, though Adam was formed from the dust of the ground by God, and Eve from Adam's rib, there included all human beings. As Daniel 5.27 proclaims, and this means you, this means me, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. We are all lacking. We fall short of the glory of God. We come forth from the womb speaking lies. We are conceived in sin and are born sinners. And being a sinner is a sure death sentence. And we're not just talking about physical death, but the second death, eternal death, where the spirit, soul, and body are tormented forever and ever. No end. Sinners are in deep trouble, and everyone is a Sinner. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard its spots? May you also do good who are accustomed to do evil? Jeremiah 13 23. As a Christian, the Apostle Paul said this of himself. In Romans chapter 7, and this is a more literal translation, <laughs> what I desire, I do not. But what I hate, this I do. For what good I desire, I do not. But what I desire not, this evil I do. Wretched human being, I. Who will rescue me out of the body of this, the death? I thank the God through Jesus Christ, the Lord of us. And I cannot help but to believe that Paul 
would be well served in his thanks, thanking God, to, re, to be referring to what he wrote as led by the Holy Spirit in Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And I really believe that at the bottom of that statement is the new birth, qualifying us by birthing us again from above. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Again, that's what happens when we are born Again, the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness. A most delightful word, a most comforting word. Oh, I feel that way in the bottom of my heart. Forgiveness. What a comforting word. This word has to do with sending away, dismissing, canceling, omitting, delivering from, pardoning. I speak today to those who are burdened, heavy laden, with a conscience of having sinned that can only be eased by the blood of Christ. I would highly request, direct, my great heartfelt desire is for you to look at Hebrews chapters 9 and 10. Read those for yourself. Our conscience is only eased by the blood of Christ. A continual application of that blood that was shed only once in his death. The blood of of Christ. I speak not only to those who want to be saved, but to those Christians who must daily confess their current sins to the Lord. I need only remind you of people like King David and the Apostle Paul, to whom we just referred sin is still a problem for the Christian in our daily lives. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary, it will never lose its power. A continual application, spiritually speaking, of that blood that was shed only once in his death. The forgiveness in Christ is total. It is eternal. It is absolute. Exodus 34 verses 6 and 7 expresses the totality of God's forgiveness. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. God's forgiveness is total. Every type of wrong doing, iniquity, 
transgression and sin forgiven. Number two, forgiveness in Christ is eternal. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, I, I, he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, for my own purpose, and I will not remember your sins. That very verse written by Isaiah is the answer to the prophet Isaiah's plea later in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 64, 9, Isaiah says, Do not be furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. And God answered that again, may I say, and I will not remember your sins. Little note here, little interjection. To not remember, I don't think it has to do with forgetting. To not remember means God will not bring it to mind. The omniscient, all-knowing God has covered the sins of his people. He has blotted out their sins. He has put their sins behind his back, cast their sins into the depth of the sea, as far as the east is from the west. He has removed sin from his people. He has put away sin. He will not bring it to mind. Beloved, he is satisfied that the sins of his people are paid for. You see, beloved, God's forgiveness is absolute. Blessed the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. Psalm 32, 2. Impute there means charge with. Oh, what a blessing that God will not charge his people with sin. Who? Who shall bring a charge against God, God's elect? God's forgiveness is absolute. Total, eternal, absolute forgiveness. To go further, God's forgiveness is a legal and just forgiveness. It is justified at the highest level of justice. Even God's justice a perfect justice. You may be dealt with wrongly in the courts of human beings, but God's justice is a perfect justice. A perfect justice where the holy God sacrificed the perfect, sinless humanity of the eternal Son of God as a substitute in the place of the elect people of God. The Son, Jesus Christ, bore the sins of these elect in his own body on the cross, shedding the lifeblood of his humanity as the required penalty to satisfy God's justice for all eternity. Because of that justification accomplished by Christ, God raised him from the dead. God's forgiveness 
is a righteous, just forgiveness, and perfectly so. The justice of God has been satisfied. And God's elect are forgiven. As God calls them in the new birth. Which is accomplished by faith. That faith is applied by the Holy Spirit to God's elect. I should not have said is applied. That faith applied by the Holy Spirit to God's elect is exercised by the elect as they trust Christ for the forgiveness of their own personal sins. That's what happened to you and I when God birthed us again from above. That new birth came with faith. That faith was exercised by you and I as we trusted Christ for the forgiveness of our own personal sins and all of them. Stop. Stop right there, preacher. I can hear folks saying that. All this talk about the elect. Only the elect can be saved. How does anybody know if they are the elect? Folks, that's not the question. That's not the question. The question is, above all else, do you want to be forgiven for your sins? The questions are, do you believe there is a holy God who will carry out judgment? Are you willing to confess your specific sins before that God? Are you, are you convinced that you, circle that word you, why, oh, you are a sinner worthy of no nothing less than eternal punishment? In hell. Do you want to be forgiven enough to where you are willing to forsake your sins and serve the living God forever? Folks, we see that in repentance. Something else we see in repentance. Do you hate your sin? And want to be right with God. Do you believe that even though you desire now to live a holy life before God, are you convinced now that living that holy life is not what will save you? The only way, do you believe the only way you can be forgiven? And forever saved is to believe in Christ's sacrifice on the cross for your sins. It's all about Him. Forgiveness. If you believe the gospel, which includes repentance toward God, as led and indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you will be forgiven. You will be saved. And guess what? You will prove to have been one of God's elect. We're going to begin moving toward closing this lesson by briefly viewing two more areas concerning forgiveness. We have mentioned King David and the Apostle Paul as men of God needing forgiveness. I'm going to read uh, from Psalm 51. Don't turn there at this time because I'm going to be reading 
some selected verses from that psalm. It's better that you just listen from Psalm 51. King David, as a man of God, having horrendously sinned, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. That sounds a whole like, a whole lot, excuse me, like what we see in 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. David confesses here, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. I don't think that he's looking back there when he says that, recalling all of the sins that he had committed. How is his sin ever before him? Because he sins every day, just like you and I do. We need to acknowledge those sins every day. Hide your face, says David to the Lord God. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me that comes with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Now listen to this. The sacrifices of God, a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Oh, the Lord God and His mercy. Christian, God does not despise a broken and contrite heart. If you come before Him with a broken and contrite heart, confessing your sins. He is faithful. He's just, perfectly so, to forgive you for your sins. Turn with me to 1 John. I've gained so much comfort from these verses. 1 John Chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. 1 John 1, 8 through 10. Listen up. There's admonition here, but great comfort. If we, excuse me, yes, that's correct. If we say that we have no sin. Now he's speaking to the people of God here, folks. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, that's part of repentance, folks. He is faithful and just to forgive us sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I think that's quite clear. We should draw great comfort from that as well as admonition to confess our sins. Finally, we must not forgiveness, excuse me. We not, must not forget, we must not forget, forgive me. That Forgiveness by human beings concerning other human beings is especially true in our behaving in a way that would please God. And even more so in Christ's body, the church. 
Ephesians 4.32 on the matter of forgiving one another is clear and without dispute. Ephesians 4.32, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Uh, notice how some things accompany other things. In that verse, for instance, kindness, tender hearted tender-heartedness and forgiveness all mentioned together. They go together, folks. If you're forgiving, you're kind. If you're forgiving, you're tender-hearted towards others. Some graces, some virtues accompany other graces, other virtues but folks, there's another side to that coin. Some evils, some sins accompany other evils, other sins. If you want to turn to Matthew 18, you may do so. You can do so. going to read the parable of the unforgiving servant. Please listen to this. I've seen uh, some of the wrongdoing here done even uh, in the church, folks. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, and we close with this. Then Peter came to him, the Lord Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, what is he talking about there? I believe he's talking about forbearance. We need to forbear with one another. If we have a fellow Christian who's struggling with certain things, we need to forbear with them. We need to be kind. We need to be tender-hearted. We need to love one another. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. Settle accounts. Bring it to a close, folks. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But he was not able to pay. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. When he says, have patience with me, he's asking him, bear with me, bear with me. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me. Bear with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not. He did not will. He had no will, desire, to bear with him, to forgive him, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all 
the debt. Because you begged me. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servant? Just as I had pity on you. You see, certain bad things go with certain bad things, don't they? Certain sins go with certain sins. Not willing to forbear. Not willing to forgive. Not having compassion. Not having pity. There's no love there. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due him. So, in the same way, folks, like as, so my heavenly Father also will do to you if any of you, listen to the next three words, from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. You know how often I've told you, you just can't go through the motions, folks. It's got to be from the heart, and that can only be worked by the Holy Spirit of God. We need to pray. How much we need to pray. Let us bear with one another, having compassion for each other. Let us be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Amen.